So in today's recipe we're making Irish scones, plain Irish scones. So you'll need strong white flour, salt, 200 ml of milk, which I have in the jug here, one egg, baking powder, um, I have a flour dredger just for the worktop for rolling out the dough, um, the mixture and cutting out my scone mix. I have a bowl for mixing up and I have a scone cutter which you dip in your flour and it stops it sticking to the mix mixture. So um, here we go. The first thing to do for the scone recipe is put your oven onto the fan oven at 220 degrees. So fan heat at 220 to get your oven nice and warm for the first 10 minutes of cooking the scones. Then we have a plain flat baking tray which we've lined with parchment paper to stop it sticking. You can just uh, drench it with flour either. The flour will stop the scone sticking but just in case I'm going to use a sheet of parchment paper as well. In a large bowl we're going to sieve together the dry ingredients. So that is our flour which is 350 grams of strong white flour or plain flour. Um, and we have our baking powder which is one tablespoon of baking powder. If you don't have a tablespoon you can always just use a dessert spoon like this size here and you can use approximately one and a half or two of them will equate to one tablespoon. Then we're going to add our pinch of salt. So that's all the dry ingredients we're going to sieve in to the bowl now. So next we're going to add the butter. So we have 60 grams of cold butter, ideally diced but I just have it in kind of lumps here. And um, because we want to keep the butter cold you can rub it in by hand until the mixture is it's like breadcrumbs or you can use a food blender, a hand blender if you like, just if your hands are very warm, which mine are. So I'm going to use a hand blender just for this part uh, to mix up the butter and flour till I get like breadcrumbs. Um, and then we're going to do the next stage. This is what the mixture should look like, just so you can see the consistency after you mix the butter in. Uh, I find the hand blender just a lot easier because it doesn't melt the butter. So then it's you can see it's kind of like a breadcrumb mixture. You just don't really see the butter anymore. Then I'm going to make a well in the middle and I have my egg cracked into my 200, one egg cracked into 200 mils of milk here. I'm going to pour um, three quarters of it into the center here and then I'm going to leave some to kind of mop up the rest. Okay, so then you're just going to mix it up with your hand in a counterclockwise and clockwise direction um, to get it all mixed up in a, in a good consistency. Okay, so I'm going to have to stop the video now because I need both hands, one to hold the bowl or you can see it keeps spinning. So um, I'll come back to you in one second. When I've mixed in all the milk and butter, uh, the milk and egg, sorry, this is what you're left with. So it's like a stodgy kind of raggy mixture. Okay, you don't want to over mix it. So just mix it until literally all the liquid is absorbed. So that's your mixture. It's a very sticky mixture. Okay, so I've rolled our stodgy mixture out onto the floured worktop. Um, and I've used a rolling pin. I drenched the f r rolling pin in flour first. I rolled it out and you'll, you'll f actually feel the air as you roll it out. So be really gentle because of the baking powder starting to rise. So it's a really airy mixture. So get your mixer. Th this mixture should make at least eight large scones. Um, this cutter is a medium size, so I could probably go bigger, but I'm just gonna start to cut my scone mixture. Okay, so there's one and you'll see that by covering the mixture, covering the cutter in flour first, it stops it from sticking to the mixture. Okay, so just do it as quick as you can and then we're going to get them into the oven for 10 minutes at 220 degrees first of all um, and then we'll reduce the heat. So you'll see after I cut out the scones, I actually got 18 out of these, this scone mixture. It's meant to make eight but that's with a seven centimeter scone cutter. I use like a, a four centimeter scone cutter. So you'll see compared to my hand, they're a nice size, um, especially if you're going to have people over and they just want to nibble on something. They don't want a big, huge scone. So these are nice bite size ones. Um, you can make loads of different variations. You can add grated cheese to make them savory for kids' lunch boxes. Anything you want, you could sneak in some carrot, grated carrot as well, or you could make them sweet. You can add some orange rind or lemon rind or even blueberries or cranberries is lovely for a sweet scone. These are just plain scones. So now before they go in the oven, I just have some milk here um, and I have my uh, basting brush here. So I'm just gonna cover each scone uh, with a bit of milk to give it a bit of a glaze. And that means it'll come out of the oven uh, with a nice shiny top on each scone. Now they're going into the oven at 220 degrees for 10 minutes and then as soon as we see them rising to um, 
a, a crisp topping on them so you see them rising we're going to reduce it quickly down to 160 um, for another 10 minutes so 20 minutes in total 10 minutes at 220 and then we are going to do them for 10 minutes at 160. There are scones out of the oven after I turned down the oven after eight minutes actually didn't need the 10 from the 220 because this oven is pretty hot so it will vary depending on your oven and how quick it is um, and then I gave it 10 minutes at 160 um, so just keep an eye on them it will really vary because ovens really change they can fluctuate in temperatures up to 40 degrees depending on what brand of an oven you have so um, and don't worry the ones at the back will always go slightly browner I actually turned the tray around halfway because the ones at the back we're going a bit too brown so I turned it around to put them at the front to give them more even baking so this is our nice little scones bite-sized scones so this is our scones with some Kerrygold butter and some raspberry jam and let me know if there's any other recipes you'd like us to try particular Irish recipes